Hi. Um, firstly, I want to apologize for those um, videos that were not really audible and um, not really clear. It was um, an audio issue at the point of recording. So we um, have tried to resolve it now. And uh, I think um, going forward, most of our videos are going to be clear. Most of our videos are going to be very, very, very easy to hear. So we apologize for those um, videos and we plan to um, um, work on them. So um, those tutorials that are not clear in those previous videos, we plan to re, um, record and upload and all that. So in this um, tutorial, we uh, want to be sharing um, tips on how to set up a company in QuickBooks. Whether you're using 2015, 2016, 2017, the process of setting the company um, uh, is just the same. There's no difference and all that. So um, I'm going to be showing you the tips on how to create a company in QuickBooks. So just follow this guide. Now, when you launch your QuickBooks from your desktop, it is what you see. Now, when you see this, the next thing you need to do is you go to File, you click New Company. When you click New Company, it takes you to this section. So from this section here, you have two options. You have either the Express Start or you have the Advanced Setup. But uh, the Express Start is kind of very straightforward. You don't have to fill a lot of forms and all that. But the Advanced Setup is more detailed. It takes you into the core of your business because there are certain uh, features that are specific to your business that may not be available in all businesses. So that's why we use the Advanced Setup. Example, if I'm setting um, QuickBooks up for a supermarket, one of the key things about supermarket is that they deal in large inventories. So some other business may not actually do that. So using an Express Start, I may not be able to go into detail to tell the system that I deal with inventory. But when I use Advanced Setup, I'll be able to do that very well. So when you click Advanced Setup, you see the next option here. The next option is for you to enter the name of your company. So the name of your company is SYZ. So we'll come here, we'll enter SYZ Limited. When you do that, oh sorry, I have to go back a little bit. SYZ Limited. So you enter SYZ Limited. Then you can fill all of that information here about your company, your legal name, your street address, and all that. So these are very straight um, forms you can always fill. The next thing you click next. Now, um, when you go, to, you see your select your industry. Now, select your industry. It's a kind of a way to be able to know you know, how your chart of account looks like. That's the advantage of selecting the right industry. Now, when I select agriculture or public relation, the kind of chart of account the system will recommend for me is different when I select church or religious organization. So they are different. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be selecting general product and services. If you look at this section, you see that we have a whole lot of industries that you can select from. So here you select the one that actually describes your business. So we select general product based business. We click next. Now how is your company organized? Are you a sole trader, partnership, company limited or non-profit? So you select company limited. You click next. Now every business must have what we call a financial year. Financial year doesn't really start from January. It could start from any part of the month. So here you select the beginning of your financial year. It's very important. So 12 months from this date will actually uh, describe what your financial year looks like then you go to January that if it's your financial year you select if it's not January you can pick other months apart from January then you click next now if you want to set limit on your system maybe you don't want every, anybody to access your system you want to limit users access to this system so you enter password which means whoever launches QuickBooks and want to open this company file will have to be given this password but if he doesn't know this password he won't be able to access the system that's the advantage of using this particular one so it prevents unauthorized users or unauthorized access to your company file for privacy purposes now we are about to create our company. You click next. Now every information you enter in this particular company will be created, will be stored in a file called XYZ Limited. So we have it here. Then you click save. So when you click save, system is trying to create a company file for you. You can see here it's creating a new company file for you. Creating a new company file is very, very, very important because at the point of creating a company file, you would have all 
your information stored there both the names and every transactions you're going to be entering you can't start using quickbooks if you do not have a company file so every information you would run are all saved up in a company file even when you do backup your backups are all in your own company file so let's wait and see um how this process completes so it's creating the company file for us and that is where we're going to be working on so if i want to if i have series of files on my system and i want to differentiate one file for the other what i would use to know is the, co the company name that's why it's very important for you to use the name of your company as the name of the company file so it's very important so that when you have series of companies on the system you'll be able to differentiate one company from the other so we're waiting for the for our company file to be created so that's what we're waiting for just to be patient the system will load the company file so that we can continue meanwhile before uh, the company file loads um, there is a link down there that will actually uh, show you where to download accounting software either payroll ERP or, or ERP or ERP or an accounting software so you can very use the link it's called download accounting software.com so you can go there all right um i think we are set to move forward here now okay now it has finished creating the company file so if you can look up here now you will see the company file is created now if you click next next will take you so this is where the customization starts from now what do you sell this is very important do you sell products do you sell service or do you sell both if you sell both you select both if you sell product only and all that so you can see the description of what each of this um tells you you click next do you charge VAT? by law every business is expected to charge VAT. in the us it's called sales tax in uk it's called VAT. so but they are they all play the same thing so you select either yes or no what reporting method do you want to use to complete your VAT return by um by law you're supposed to use an accra accra basis accra basis is saying where you make a sale whether cash has been collected or not you are expected to report VAT on both cash sales and credit sales but on cash basis you're only expected to report VAT on just the cash uh, receipts so you select the accra basis you click next do you create estimate estimate is when you set build or proposals to your Client. If you run the kind of business where you have to send proposal, you have to send bid to your client before they finally convert to sale. This is what you use to track those bills. Now, when you create bill or bids, it, 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 when you create proposals on the system, it doesn't mean you've actually made a sale. System automatically has an account or has a, a, a report that tracks all the bills that you've sent, all the proposals that you've sent so far. Then, when each of these clients finally buys from you. Then you cannot convert these proposals to invoice so that's the essence of tracking that but if your business doesn't need that you sell directly to them you don't send proposal. you don't send proposals example you run a supermarket if you just leave it and move on or maybe let me activate it so that you see the way the dashboard is now do you estimate estimate it when you uh, have a policy where um uh, your clients are charged if they don't meet up to the period stated on the invoice an amount, a report that shows all the extra charges that your client is supposed to pay you for defaulting in payment that we will call your statement progress invoicing it is where your client makes series of payments to you or as the job progresses you pay they pay you partially maybe you run a real estate company you run a construction company where your client pays you as the job completes so you use progress invoicing you yeah, manage your bills that's when you manage your expenses tracking stock if you have stocks to track if you have if you sell stocks and you want to be able to know what you have at the beginning and at the end you want to generate your stock reports that's where you select yes now time time basically it's when you build customer on project time spent do you have employees now you can select yes or no but um in some countries like in Africa, in you in, in Nigeria and Ghana, they don't use QuickBooks payroll because the system doesn't com is not compatible with the payroll law under which this uh, particular um uh, application was built. So this can only work more in the UK to the positive QuickBooks UK, but though the press are, the, uh, are the same. So what you can only do here is you could just click no if the QuickBooks payroll does not comply with your own 
pay with tax law because some deductions here may not really be in accordance to your own local policy and other or your own local um, laws so most times i do not really advise my clients to use yes because at the end of the day they end up not using them we are in nigeria so we do not really use big books payroll here so do you track multiple currency yeah multiple currency is when you send invoices to your customers in different currencies and when you receive payment from your uh, customers too in different currencies i want you to track what each currency you've made you've received made or received payment on the exchange rate so at the end of the day you want to be able to know how much you've made in terms of profit on exchange rate movement you might actually make a loss on exchange rate or make a profit so what tracking multiple currency does is that it helps you to be able to track all your transactions in different currencies so yeah, you can select whichever currency you want to use so if you're going to use richest pounds you enter now i'm going to use my own local currency here so i'm going to pick nigeria yes and i'll click continue here click next so here begin of your start select a day to start tracking your finance which is different from your financial year your financial year is always 12 months so you could your financial year can run from january to december but at the point of installing quickbooks you might install it during the course of the year maybe may so that is what we call your conversion date now that particular date could either be at the beginning of the financial year or during the year you know the financial year is this that is when you are setting up your quickbook the same time you are starting the year so that's why you use beginning of the financial year but if during the course of the year you that's during the course of the year after certain months has gone you want to you want to set up your accounting system that's where you use your today's date so today's date is used during the course of the year while beginning of the financial year is used at the beginning of your financial year or at the beginning of your accounting year so you can select this date and click next so this is where your friend your chart of account is so this chart of account is dependent on the industry that you select initially but it, it's editable you can edit you can review you can add your own and you can delete whatever channel of account is only but the most important thing is that whatever account you add has to be under the right account type because an account head an account name does not go to the p and l because of the name it goes to the p and l if it's an if the account type actually goes to p and l example if i select shipping and delivery income it's an income to me so what you make this to go to the p and l it's not because it's income is written here is because the account type i selected is income so so applies to other account heads so here you can see congratulations we finished setting up our company then you go to your company setup under your company setup you will now see a dashboard that will probably show you all the icons that you need to enter different currencies so this is how quickbooks work when it comes to setting up a company if you have any question you can probably drop it at his comments and i will definitely respond you can also uh, send me um, uh, suggestions on areas you want me to talk about in terms of using QuickBooks. If you have a challenge for your business and you want me to share tutorials on how this system can work for you, you can also talk to me and I will help you, gladly help you do that. So um, if you need more information, you can go to um, our link, download accountingsoftware.com. We have more information about um, QuickBooks and a HR on ERP and all that so that is just a brief tutorial on how to set up a company in QuickBooks so if you look at it now you will see that the dashboard is still loading we are waiting for the dashboard to load. so you can see already we have it so you close this when you close this so you can see this is our QuickBook dashboard now already loaded um, I'm trying to see what the challenge is here. Now you can see this is our big books.